Let's continue our introduction to Solaris and Karma by looking at our camera settings as well as our Karma render settings. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon, but let's go ahead and look at our camera settings to start off with. So the things that you wanna pay attention to here is gonna be your view. So in the view tab, we have our focal length, which I've changed to 100 from the default to 50. And I've just rearranged my camera so that it is more framing up our scene here. So if I change this focal length, that's going to change the zooming of our camera basically. So if I set this to something like 200, it's going to be more zoomed in. If I set it to something like 50, then it's going to be zoomed out a little bit more here. So I'm going to set that back to 100. And then we also have the sampling and karma tab. So with this karma tab, we have the ability to add lens shaders. That's kind of outside the scope of what I want to cover in this video. So I'm going to leave this for now, but let's go back to our sampling. And in here, we have a couple of important settings. We have our exposure, which is basically going to tell you how much light is being let into our camera. So if we increase or decrease that, it's going to increase or decrease the brightness of our image. We also have our focus distance as well as our f-stop, which are gonna to correlate to where our focus is being applied or our defocusing, our depth of field. So we'll look at that here in just a moment once we actually start to render. But let's go ahead and look at the render settings first. So if we take a look at this render settings, we have this quick setup, which allows us to just set up some optimization AOVs. So it, it just creates a bunch of AOVs um, just by default, just for a quick setup for you. You can use that if you'd like. We can change the name of our primitive here. So if we look down in our scene graph, that's going to change the name of this. So if I set this to something like two, you can see that that changes this down here set that back and we also have the ability to change the name of our image that we're going to write to disk we have our camera so we can select which camera we want to use we can also set our resolution here and i would recommend setting this here you can actually override this but i would recommend just setting it through here we can change the render engine from cpu to xpu i'm going to leave it on xpu for the moment because that's what we're going to actually be using to render out we also have our path trace samples here, and this is going to refer to how many samples our, our render is going to use. So the lower the samples, the more noisy your image, the higher the samples, the longer it's going to take to render, but the more it should clean up. Let's come to this rendering tab and come back to the sampling here. So I'm not really gonna touch anything in this, but in our limits here, this is important to know, you can change the limits for your different passes so like your diffuse or your reflection or refraction volume subsurface so if you have any volumes or subsurfaces in your scheme in your scene then you're going to want to increase these so that you get some more uh, bounces that are going on with those important to adjust those as you need things like refractions if you're getting some black spots in your glasses uh, or in your like glass then you're going or refractive materials i should say um, typically glass and things like that, then you're going to maybe look to increase that more. We can set per object render settings. So if I drop down a render geometry settings, you can see that we get some different object or options here to change some different things in here. So just be aware that you can do that. I'm not gonna cover that here, but let's go ahead and come back to our render settings and move over to the camera effects. So by default, this motion blur will be checked. We don't have any motion blur in our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uncheck this, but this is where you would actually go about changing all of these values. We do have, or we don't have depth of field right now, but we have the ability to add that if we would like. So we'll leave that checked for now. And then in this geometry and shading tab, we have dicing, which is gonna be important for things like displacement. So basically this dicing quality scale is going to adjust how much tessellation at render time is happening. So if your objects need some more tessellation to get the quality in your displacement that you'd like, then this is where you would adjust that setting. We also have this image output. So this first tab of the AOVs is gonna be render variables. Basically just your AOVs, you can add or get rid of AOVs in here if you like. 
We have this filters tab, which is super important because it allows us to add a denoiser to our image. So we can turn on denoising with NVIDIA or the optics, or sorry, the NVIDIA optics or the Intel Odin denoisers. It's also important to know that we don't have to necessarily bake this into our render. We can drop down a cop net and do a denoise pass after, or you can do it in a different software if you'd like, but you can do denoising after. You don't have to commit to one with your render. And it should give you the same results if you're using the, the cop way of doing it. We can also bake in tone mapping if we'd like. We have some different settings here. I'm not gonna do that. We also have our OCIO, so we can adjust some different things with that. Also not going to worry about that for now because I'm going to just export untone mapped images and uh, do any of my compositing through there. We have some different tabs here that I'm not really gonna touch. We have our deep output, so you can export deep data, which is a very uh, complex topic, so I'm not gonna cover that. And then we have our advanced settings here, which allow us to change from progressive to bucket renders and adjust the bucket size and things like that. This really only works for the CPU version because XPU is just going to be a progressive render no matter what. From my understanding, I've never been able to get it to render to a bucket, but just be aware that uh, CPU, you should be able to change this from progressive to a bucket render. Let's take a look at our render wrap here. So this is important because this is where you're going to render to disk, render to end play. You can set your current frame as the frame range or the frame range that you would like. It's going to default to use your render delegate that you have set up, so Karma XPU in this case, and our render settings that we have set up in our scene graph. You can change this if you would like. So if you want to use a different set of render settings, then you can override that here. You can also override the camera and the output image as well as our resolution. I'm just going to leave that because we would set that in our render settings. It's a good practice in my opinion, just to do it inside of our render settings here. But we also have this. So in our render tab, we come over from that to our monitor or we have the ability to turn on our in-play monitor. So that is going to be unchecked by default. Not really sure why they chose to do that. I would recommend first thing you do just coming in here and checking that on because once we have that checked on and we click render to disk, it's gonna pop up our in-play and allow us to actually look at what is actually rendering out. Without that checked, it's just going to render straight to disk and you won't necessarily know without looking whether it's done or what's going on, if something goes wrong. So I would recommend just setting that to on and maybe even setting that to the default. Now, the other thing that we need to take a look at is we have different settings that we're going to use for rendering. So by default, we have viewport render settings. So if we hover over our viewport and press D, we have the ability to change render settings through here. And we can do that and the viewport will use it if that's what is it is actually using to render. If you don't have a render settings node set, it's going to use whatever these settings are in here by default. We can override whichever render settings that we want though by coming to this perspective, coming down to render settings, and we can set this to our viewport settings. If we wanna use our viewport, we can set this to our default render, which is going to just be this render settings node. And if we go ahead and just turn this on, I have the little button here just to turn on our Karma XPU. It's going to load up and it's going to go ahead and start rendering. Now, if we want to change this, like I said, to our viewport render settings, we can go ahead and do that. And you see, we didn't have any denoising going on before, but now we do. That's because we have a little button right here that allows us to turn on and off denoising. So if I uncheck that, it would, and I restart my render, it's going to turn off the denoising. If I just check that on, it's going to enable that right away for us turn that on and off however we would like and it's going to adjust accordingly now if you wanted to have completely different render settings let's say we want to change this over i'm just actually going to turn off our rendering for the moment let's go ahead and create another one of these and let's set this to render settings preview so we don't get an error now you see we have two different render settings in here and if we come in here we can set this to something like our cpu i'm going to turn this down to like one sample and then I'm gonna come back to our other render settings and I'm gonna change this also to CPU. 
And I'm gonna leave this on nine for our primary samples. And then we need to come to our image output and set to filters. And I'm just gonna turn on our denoiser just so we see just kind of a difference between these. So if I go ahead and come to our render settings and set this to render settings preview, and I turn on our CPU render, it's going to start rendering and you see that we get a pretty noisy image here. So we could use this for like our preview if we just were working in our, our viewport, just want a quick preview. You can set that while we're working. And then once we want a more final version, we can maybe switch over to the other render settings. You're going to see that that's going to start to render and our denoiser is going to kick in. And now we get a much cleaner image, a much better idea of what's actually going on in our scene. So you don't have to set that up, but you can, if you would like, you can set up kind of whatever you you want with that and get some some nice different um, you know settings to, to work with while you're working inside of, of Houdini. But anyways, that kind of covers all I want to cover with this. Actually, before we go, there's one actually one other thing that I forgot to mention. We have this little button right here. This button allows you to look at different AOVs that you have set up. So just be aware that you can check those inside of your viewport here. And then this button right here will also lock your viewport stage so that it doesn't just update constantly and give you any sort of issues with that. We also have this little button down here, which we, if we just click and hold that. We have this color correction and view memory if you wanna view our memory. Just take a look here. That doesn't really give us anything that I use. Um, I would say I use this color correction more. So let's just uncheck that. So you can set your different displays here. So you can set this to be o OCIO and you can you know set this to ACES if you'd like. Uh, if you wanna view it, the ACES output or whatever you would like, whatever you have set up in your scene. But anyways, that kind of covers everything that I wanted to cover as far as the render settings in camera. Um, actually, I guess just forgetting as well, with our camera settings, we forgot to take a look at the de uh, depth of field. So let's look at that real quick. So if I select our camera and I press enter over our viewport, we get a couple of different things. So if I press shift and F, that is going to enable the our focus plane, it's going to show us our focus plane in the viewport. If I press shift and F again, it's going to change that view mode. So we can shift and click to set our focus distance. So you can see that we have this set now. So if I just cycle through this, that's the first view mode. The second one is going to actually give us a little bit more of an opaque uh, plane here that we can see. So I can, I can shift click and just move around our focus plane. Let's maybe set it to something there. And let's up our f-stop here. So if I change this to like something super harsh, maybe like 0.1 or whatever, you're gonna see that we're gonna get a very harsh depth of field. You see that we have this object that's super in focus and then very quickly the focus falls off here. And another thing that's important to, to know, if you have something like a, a light in your scene, a lot of times you'll have the, something selected in your viewport. If you uncheck, the options right here, you're going to display the light guides or get rid of those displays. So you no longer have to, you know, look at those um, in, your, in your viewport. So just be aware that that is something that you can do really easy. If you uncheck this, it's going to get rid of all of your geometry in the viewport if we were not rendering. So let's just, or normally that does this. Oh, it's your selection, sorry, displays your selection. Uh, this is the geometry, sorry. And then, uh, like I said, this is the, the lights. So that I think wraps up everything that I wanted to cover. Forgot about a couple of things there. So anyways, that is all that we're gonna cover as far as this series goes. There are a couple of other things, or sorry, as far as this scene goes for this series, there are a couple of other things that I would like to cover. Um, they're gonna be more of like one-off things that are going to be important to know but that aren't necessarily linked to the scene that we didn't have to use for this scene. So we will cover those here in the, the coming videos. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. I, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I also have a Discord that you can join if you would like to ask questions there. I will do my best to answer whatever I can in there. We have a bunch of people in there that are 
active and like to help each other out. So definitely jump in there if you're interested in that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.